How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boilai Hobby Time. Two of the most fun projects that I've worked on are these two little mine cross sections from the Wild Imaginary West. This week, I decided to build a third one, but just a little bigger. The first step in the build is to plot out the general shape of the mine. So I grabbed a pencil and I started plotting. Old mines didn't have any built-in plumbing, so they would slope the tunnel slightly uphill so water would run out of the tunnel instead of pooling deeper in the mine. The mine is going to have multiple horizontal levels, one vertical shaft, and a discovered cave system on the right-hand side, which is of course occupied by a monster. I found this very hungry caterpillar-looking monster who appears to be tunneling, so I figured it would be a perfect monster for a subterranean diorama. I then broke out my hot wire and began carving out the shapes that I had sketched earlier with the pencil. Needless to say, I had proper ventilation while burning the foam. After all the pieces had been cut out, I grabbed another large piece of foam to use as the backing for the mine. I put all the pieces in place and I traced out the shape of the mine and I cut it to match. I then dry fit everything to make sure it looked good. I glued everything together with some foam safe super glue. After the pieces were on, I cleaned up the edge to give it a nice uniform surface between the two foam layers, then I added a plank of wood to act as the protective base for the diorama. I trimmed it to size off camera. Once it had been glued in place, it was time to start adding texture to the walls. To create a rocky texture, I used a Dremel and a carving bit. This creates a ton of powderized foam, which has no business being in your lungs. So a respirator is a must if you ever attempt this. Once I had given the whole mine some nice surface texture, I vacuumed up all the toxic dust. After cleaning up the texture using a torch, I connected the small upper cavity to the lower one. Little passages like this are often caused by corrosion or very hungry caterpillars. I started forming the large cave section and I decided I wanted a little more depth. So after adding some stalactites and stalagmites, I ripped up a second layer of foam to sit behind the first, followed by a final layer of foam to sit at the back. It looks a little bit goofy from the backside, but that's not the correct viewing angle, so I'm not too worried about it. Next, it was time for the terrain paste. I whipped up a batch of plaster, paint, and Mod Podge and I thinned it down to a brushable consistency I applied it to all of the foam surfaces on the front and the sides of the diorama. For the top of the diorama, the above ground section, I use Sculpt Mold. This is an easy way to achieve a natural looking terrain layer with very little effort. I also embedded some plaster rocks to give the terrain more variety. After that, I set the base aside to dry and I moved on to the head frame. Before cutting up all the balsa, I made sure to clean up my cutting mat so that everything would sit nice and flush. A head frame is what sits above a mine shaft and holds the pulley that moves a bucket or cage up and down. In this case, the shaft is not the entrance to the mine, so there's no need for the cage to get all the way out of the ground. Hence the cover up top, and just a little hole for the cable that holds the cage to pass through. I built a little A-frame, a hoist box, I threw together a little cage from some brass mesh, and I moved back over to the mine, which was now dry. I wanted more texture and variety along the base of the tunnel wall, so I sprinkled on some pebbles and sand and I sealed it in place with watered down white glue and isopropyl alcohol. After that had dried, I took it outside and I primed it. I realized I didn't stick down the mining equipment, so I went back, added that, also threw in a little bucket full of rocks. I also grabbed some 1 to 70 second scale California gold miners, and in case you're unsure of how big this caterpillar is compared to a 1 to 70 second scale human, here is a side by side comparison. It's important not to get too close to these things. Oops. I started off the painting with a brown base coat for all of the walls of the tunnels, and then I switched to a green for the walls of the cavern. I went over that with a bluish gray, and then I gave a mist of tan to the interior of the whole mine and cave system. I wanted the cave to look a little bit more damp, so I gave it a coat of Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss from Citadel. While I was in the washing mood, I applied a combination of earthy washes to the above ground surface 
and that was most of the painting done for the mine. I've had mixed comments about blacking out the cross sections of these builds. I've considered embedding stuff in these sections or texturing it like earth. Uh, I think it would end up looking a little bit distracting and kind of like a quarry. So in the end, I decided to just paint this one all black like the other two. I clipped some balsa wood strips down to the correct size off camera and I stained them with soy sauce. Okay, just kidding. It's an ink wash. It gave them a slightly darker tint, but later on I decided to go back and paint them anyways, so this step was kind of irrelevant. Once those beams were dry, it was time to stick them in place. Like I've mentioned before, this mine cross-section idea is something that I first saw Luke Towen do, and I was greatly inspired by it. If you haven't seen his mine build, you should definitely go check it out. After the support beams were all in place, it was time to paint the figures. I sprayed on some one-directional white to establish some values, and then I painted them with some contrast paints. In my last Wild West video, I talked about the machines that repel monsters. Well, down in the ground, the machines don't always work very well because of blocked signals, making mining a far more dangerous occupation than many other of the occupations in this universe. Next, I painted Heimlich. I went with a pale color scheme because this guy doesn't get much sunlight, and nor does he use teeth whiteners, apparently. After the figures were done, I started wrapping up the final details of the mine. I added some grass tufts and flocking to the top. I sealed it all in place with watered down glue and isopropyl alcohol. After that, it was time to add the lights. I used these tiny little LEDs and I carefully punched some holes through the back everywhere I wanted a light. And the back looks pretty messy at this point but it's okay, I'll clean it up later. I also added some fake wires between the lights to look like that's where the power was coming from, and the last thing to do was to put all of the figures in place. After Heimlich was seated comfortably in his little cubby, I called it good. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out as always to my patrons. You guys are the best. Have an awesome week, everyone. I'll see you next time.